The protagonist of this book is an ordinary person who, by chance, realizes a peerless divine skill. His background is shrouded in mystery. In the early stages of the book, a series of doubts are investigated around the protagonist's background. In the later stages, the main focus is on his difficult cultivation, ultimately unifying the ten major sects of the cultivation world, and leading them to break through the limitations of the world and create a world belonging to the strong. This book is my debut work. In my spare time, I always update it every day. Welcome to Collect It. Your attention is my motivation to write a book, thank you for your support. Chapter 1 Changes in the Zhou family. You are listening at novelfull.audio. In the northwest corner of Ningcheng, a building with a Jiangnan water town style is located by the river. At this time, it is already midnight, and the courtyard is very quiet. It seems that everyone in this family is already asleep. At this moment, several figures rushed into the courtyard, their movements were very light. The group consisted of four people all masked and dressed in ordinary people's clothing, presumably afraid of being recognized by others. The leader was tall and made a gesture of attack towards the two people behind him. The two of them slipped into the east, west, and wing rooms respectively, while the leader remained in place. There was no sound coming from the room. Soon, two people from the east and west rooms came out, holding two things wrapped in cloth in their hands. They were round and the night was too dark to tell what they were. The leader gestured to retreat, and all four of them withdrew from the courtyard as if nothing had happened. In the morning, a scream shattered the tranquility. A woman, crying and crying, looked at the corpse on the bed, which had no head left. She cried her heart and lungs out. At this moment, she ignored her sadness and ran to the next western room. When she was at the door, she stopped because the door was not connected. She saw her son lying in bed, who also had no head, feeling weak and fainting. When she woke up again, it was already noon. Suddenly, a mouthful of blood spurted out and she fainted. After a quarter of an hour, she woke up and recalled the happy family of three that had experienced it yesterday. She couldn't imagine who would have done such a killing to their family, even her five-year-old child. For a while, she couldn't bear to be sad anymore. She carried her son's body to her husband's side, covered their bodies with a blanket, and finally wiped away the tears that couldn't be wiped away. Her name is Ren Sufang. She was originally an external female cultivator of the Weishan sect, a non-mainstream sect in Zhongzhou. She was also ordinary in the sect. During a mission, she was seriously injured and fainted on the roadside. She thought it would end her life like this. When she woke up again, she saw a man feeding her medicine. This man was her deceased husband, named Zhou Huowang. Later, under his daily care, she recovered from her injuries. As time passed, I fell in love and thought that I had reached the age of getting married. The sect must have thought that I had died in this mission, so why not get married from now on and find a place where no one knows to teach my husband and son. So they came to the northwest of Ningcheng and built this courtyard. Later, they had a son named Zhou Zilong, and the family lived a small life. Huo Wang treated her very well, and she seemed to have forgotten her identity as a member of the sect, so she lived a quiet life for six years. Today, she lost all of this. Looking back on last night, she didn't know why she had fallen asleep so deeply. She knew nothing about what had happened and the person who started it must have had a much higher cultivation than her. What method was used to make her fall asleep? Suddenly, a terrifying thought surged in my heart. Perhaps it was the assassin sent by my previous sect who discovered that I was not dead and had left my sect to start a family and seek revenge. Why didn't they kill her together? Perhaps it was because I had also been born and died for my sect before. Indeed, I had also died once. Sadness surged into my heart again, and tears could no longer hold back. Even if it was an unremarkable sect, it was not something she could afford. Thinking of this, she walked to the dressing table by the bedside and looked at herself in despair in the mirror. She opened the drawer, 
took out a rectangular clasp, and took out a shining dagger from inside. She knocked over the oil lamp and lit the curtains, indicating that she wanted to go with her husband. She aimed a dagger at her throat, closed her eyes, and pushed her hand forward. Just then, a wave of nausea came and she suddenly stopped moving her hand. The dagger cut through her skin, but it was not fatal. She is very familiar with this feeling, and she had this reaction a few years ago when she had her first child. She calmed her mind, thinking about her deceased husband and the possibility of being pregnant with his orphan. She put down her dagger and looked at the cold corpse lying in bed. Her eyes became firm as she walked out of the room, watching the raging fire, and turned to disappear into the night. Chapter 2 Magical Legiacian Village You are listening at NovelFull.audio A small stream flows through a mountain stream, and a young boy of three or four years old is playing by the stream. At this moment, a grass house door in the distance can be heard a woman's shout, flying cub, came back to eat. After hearing the shouting, the child looked towards the woman and ran towards her direction. The appearance of the woman has not changed much from three years ago, except for a hint of aging on her face and a slight haggard expression. It looks like I often have trouble sleeping well, and my eye bags are quite heavy. I think I have suffered a lot in the past three years. After discovering that she was pregnant, she put down the idea of seeking short dot sighted opportunities and left Ningzhou, heading south. She walked non dot stop all the way, enjoying meals and sleeping outdoors. She didn't know how far she had traveled, until her belly was round and she couldn't walk anymore, and finally stopped at a small mountain village. There are about ten households and more than ten thatched houses in the small mountain village, all built along the creek of the mountain stream, making it a land of beautiful mountains and rivers. She inquired and found out that this village is called Legiation. The villagers here all have the surname Li. The elderly in the village said that their ancestors were the legitimate relatives of the Li family, a large family in Zhongzhou. They were expelled from Zhongzhou by the family owner for stealing forbidden martial arts, and thus came to such a remote mountain valley where they lived a life of seclusion in the mountains and forests nowadays, our ancestors have long been ancient, but there is an unwritten rule in Legiation village that every child must spend a day alone soaking in a small pond at the source of the mountain stream when they are three years old. The elderly say that this pond is strange. After taking a bath in the pond, one will never get sick again. However, this effect only applies to children born in Legiation village. People from other villages or children not born in Legiation village who soak in the pond will not have any effect. For a long time, the villagers have regarded this pond as a treasure. The people of Legiation village live a long life, and there are many centenarians. Although there are only about ten households in the village, the population is quite large, and basically every family has five generations living together. This is not common in the world of mortals, perhaps it is because they have this pond that everyone in this secluded mountain village can live a long life. When Ren Sufang arrived at this mountain village, she discovered something unique. Although he was an outsider who did not enter the mainstream sect, he still had some understanding of the spiritual energy of heaven and earth. She felt the laws of the spiritual energy of heaven and earth here, which were not natural, as if someone had specially arranged it. She had some understanding of the formation, but could not see through what kind of formation was in front of her. Perhaps the artificial skill of the person who arranged the formation was far beyond her vision, that's also why she decided not to leave here. She walked into the village and the villagers saw a woman with a big belly, which was about to give birth. So she asked her where she came from, but of course she couldn't tell the truth. She said she had escaped from a certain place, and as for this certain place, it was a city she had passed by all the way. There was a big war going on there, and she didn't go into the city. When she heard the people who had escaped from the city, she called it Yongcheng. As for why the war was going on, she didn't want to inquire. The old woman in the village took out food for her, and she was really hungry, so she started eating in big gulps. At this moment, the woman's son came back and saw a stranger, his eyes dodging and not saying hello to her, 
as if he had not seen anything or was shy towards the opposite sex. The old woman looked at her at this moment, then at the young man in front of her, and smiled and said to her, Miss, if you don't have a place to settle down, you can stay in a humble abode. A while ago, my daughter was taken in as an inner disciple by Elder Miao of Yongcheng. I don't think she will come back in the future, so you can stay in her room. At this moment, the old woman remembered to ask her name, so Ren Sufang stayed at this house. After staying, he realized that the people in this house were all loyal and martyred. The men of the whole family went to the battlefield, and the woman had three sons and one daughter. The man went to war with the eldest and second sons, and the third son also wanted to go. The old woman cried out, saying that one must be left to take care of at home. In other words, she was afraid that they would all fall on the battlefield, his man softened his heart and left behind his youngest son. Her three sons have not yet started a family. Her eldest son, Li Jinjia, is over thirty years old this year. Her second son, Li Jinshan, is twenty-eight, and her third son, Li Jinhai, is also twenty or fifty years old this year. This year's record is similar to that of Ren Sufang. So, the woman's plan was to leave her to pass on the incense to the Li family. In the blink of an eye, three years had passed. Within a few days of staying, Ren Sufang gave birth to a little boy. In order to avoid criticism of her child in the future, she married Li Jinhai and named him Li Xiaotian. Now that Oda is three years old, it is the age to be baptized by the water pool. Chapter 3 Mysterious Pond You are listening at NovelFull.audio Early in the morning, Oda was playing by the creek. He knew that he was going to the mysterious pool to play in the water today, and he was very happy. When Ren Sufang called him, he knew that after breakfast, they would go to the pool to complete a ceremony. In no time, the people in the village gathered by the water pool. This was their ritual. Whenever a child reached the age of three, the elderly in the village could be understood as family elders composed of eight centenarians and above. They were responsible for opening the formation, and each person had a black iron plaque in their hand. They held the iron plaque and stood in all eight directions of the water pool. They all shouted, Get up, in unison. For a moment, the originally calm water pool heard a click sound, and a stone lotus floated out of the water in the middle of the pool. The patterns on the stone lotus were very ancient, and Ren Sufang was mesmerized by it. At this moment, Someone reminded them that sitting on the stone lotus, Xiao Tian regained her senses and carried her along the stone mound towards the stone lotus in the pond. She placed Xiao Tian on the middle stone platform, and Xiao Tian was a bit afraid. She comforted her by saying, Fizi, don't be afraid. Stay on this platform for a day, and you won't get sick in the future. Sure enough, Oda was not afraid after listening and sat cross legged in the middle of the stone platform. When he sat down, he felt a refreshing sensation in his body, from his feet to his head. When the coolness reached his head, he knew nothing. At this moment, to outsiders, white gas kept emitting from his body, and after fifteen minutes, the gas dissipated. At this moment, the elders sitting in eight directions glanced at each other, because they also felt strange. In the past, it would take at least five hours for white energy to stop, and some would take seven or eight hours, but this was too fast. At this moment, Oda woke up and felt a comfortable sensation in his body that he had never experienced before. The elders put aside their curiosity when they saw him awake, because once the person being baptized woke up, it meant that the baptism was over. At this point, the person being baptized needed to leave Shirlian. Oda stood up, climbed over the petals by the stone lotus, walked out, followed the stone mound to the shore, and walked to Ren Sufang's side. Everyone around them came over to congratulate, and the eight elders also withdrew their formation. They walked over, and a white-bearded elder reached out to touch Oda's hand pulse, nodded, and confirmed that he had successfully washed his marrow before finally letting go. Below the water pool is the formation that our ancestors laid out in the past, which may not necessarily have the essence-washing formation of a major sect. 
Legend has it that our ancestors practiced the formation and were one of the few masters in the formation. They created this formation and passed the activation token to the young people of eight tribes, washing away the turbid energy from their bodies. It is strange to say that outsiders cannot succeed in using this formation. Perhaps it is because our ancestors believe that if outsiders can use or remove the formation, it will bring fatal consequences to our tribe. It is precisely because of these prohibitions, coupled with the fact that this formation is not of great use, that the entire village, apart from longevity in preventing people from getting sick, has not brought much benefits because of this pond. Even if outsiders find out about such a water pond here, there is not much desire to occupy it. Buying a pill that can wash marrow is much easier than this. In fact, what they don't know is that the value of this small water pool is not as simple as it appears on the surface. When our ancestors arranged it, in addition to the wash marrow formation, there was also a formation at the bottom of the water pool. However, for so many years, no one could enter it. Even those who have been to the water pool cannot discover the mystery behind it due to lack of opportunities. It is waiting for an opportunity to give future generations a treasure. As the crowd dispersed, the pond regained its former calmness. Chapter 4 The Return of the Eldest Son of the Lee Family You are listening at NovelFull.audio Ten years have passed since Oda washed his marrow, and there hasn't been much change in Legiacian village compared to ten years ago. It's just that Oda's family has added a younger sister, who is nine years old this year and has cute big eyes. Ren Sufang gave him a special name, Li Runan, perhaps because she wants to raise her as a boy. Oda came back from hunting on the mountain, and his sister, who was playing in front of the door, saw his brother come back and happily welcomed him. She kept shouting, brother has caught a pheasant. Oda also loved this little sister very much. She touched her little head and called out to Ren Sufang in the room, Mom, I'm back. Ren Sufang walked out and smiled and said to Oda, My son is good. Today, let's have mountain chicken. Ren Sufang has become mature in recent years, no longer looking like a girl, but with a hint of the haggard middle aged woman. After all, although he stayed in the sect for a period of time, as an external disciple, he did not receive the cultivation resources of the sect. After all, he was still a mortal, so he would also suffer from birth, aging, illness, and death. She now looks like a middle-aged woman farming in a mountain village. Just as they were chatting and laughing at the door, a middle-aged man riding a horse stopped at the door. He looked at the three people in front of him and wondered if he had walked the wrong way. As he was lost in thought, he heard a little girl shouting. Brother, does this cow look different from ours? His question stumped Oda, as he had never seen such a cow before. It was the first time he had seen it since he was thirteen years old. The man on horseback is none other than Li Jinjia, the eldest who returned from fifteen years of military service. He jumped off his horse and touched his little sister's head, asking, Little girl, what is your name? The little girl timidly replied, My name is Li Runan. At this moment, Li Jinhai, who had returned from the field, excitedly called out, Big brother. Li Jinjia also realized this. Although he hadn't seen him for fifteen years, he had long thought that his father, big brother, and second brother had all died on the battlefield. Now that big brother is back alive, can he not be excited? He hugged his older brother and cried. After a moment, he seemed to remember something and asked his older brother, Why didn't my father and second brother come back with you? Li Xinjia also wiped the corners of his eyes and looked at his third younger brother in front of him with sadness. He said, Father and your second brother died in battle one after another in the second year we participated in the battle. The battle was very intense, and I almost died there. When the battle receded, I was dug out of the pile of dead people. It was the people of the Miao clan in Yongcheng who saved me and took me to the Miao clan to recuperate. My injuries gradually improved. Later, I found out that the person who saved me was the elder of the Miao clan. It was our younger sister who begged my master to go to the battlefield to save me. Xiu Xin. 
All sects have rules, that is, they do not participate in mortal struggles. So, they also waited for the end of the battle before going to the battlefield. Since then, I have been a disciple of the outer sect in Miao sect. Miao sect has rules, and outer disciples are not allowed to leave the sect at will. So, after so many years, I have been with Miao sect. Our little sister was adopted as a biological disciple by Elder Miao, and she also took good care of me. Now that I have become an inner disciple of Miao, I can go home to visit my family. Li Xinhai interrupted his elder brother and asked, Where are the corpses of my father and second brother buried? Li Xinjia returned. When I woke up, I asked my younger sister, and she said she couldn't find the bodies of her father and second brother. She must have been eaten by a wild beast. Speaking of this, Li Xinjia is also very self blaming. The old woman in the room walked out and had already heard the conversation between her two sons. She had already prepared for the worst in her heart, and now that she could come back, it was not blessed by heaven. Looking at my son's face, I felt happy from the bottom of my heart and said, Just come back, I'll cook for you. As she turned around, tears couldn't stop flowing down her face. Li Xinjia patted him and asked, Third brother, who are these? At this moment, Li Xinhai also seemed to remember something. He pulled Ren Sufang and said to his elder brother, This is my wife Sufang. Sufang nodded and called out elder brother, then said to Oda, If you come and see me soon, come and see my uncle. Oda walked over and looked at the man in front of him who was one head taller than his father, shouting, Uncle. If the man pulls his brother by the corner of his clothes and also calls out softly, Uncle. It seems that she is very familiar with strangers. Li Xinjia smiled. The Li family came back with two fewer people, and there were three more. He was very happy and walked up to Oda. He touched and gestured at Oda's height, then said, They are almost as tall as me. How old are you this year? Oda looked up at his face and replied, Uncle, my name is Oda and I'm thirteen years old this year. When he heard that he was thirteen years old, he seemed to remember something. Saying to Oda, Do you want to go outside and take a look? Oda looked at Sufang and then at his father and said, What do you think? He actually really wants to see the outside world. Li Jieshan village is far away from the city. Adults say that it takes a month to get to the nearest Yongqing by carriage. There is a saying that goes, The less you get, the more you want it. Xiao Tian is in this mood right now. Chapter 5 Uncle Takes Me Out of the Mountain You are listening at Novel Full Dot Audio. Li Xinjia looked at his younger brother and siblings and said, This time I am going down the mountain. Firstly, I want to come back and see my family. Secondly, I am also going down the mountain to carry out tasks. Miao Zong holds a grand meeting every ten years. After passing the trial session of the meeting, there is a chance to become an inner disciple, and even the sect elders use this meeting to recruit their own disciples. The conference has a condition that only teenagers aged 13 to 15 can participate. My eldest nephew happens to meet the requirements. Coincidentally, this is also my mission this time. I would like to take my nephew to try it out. What are your opinions, younger brother and younger sister? Li Xinhai had no impression of the sect. He looked at Ren Sufang and it was clear that she was the one to make the decision. Ren Sufang looked at Oda and recalled the past. She had a good understanding of the sect, and even the worst external disciples were not comparable to ordinary people. Thinking of Oda's biological father and brother's enemies who were unknown, she felt unwilling to let her son stay in Li Jieshan village for the rest of his life. After a brief moment of contemplation, he said to his elder brother, Oda is very well behaved. After hard work, please take good care of him. The meaning was very obvious, but he agreed to let his elder brother take Oda away. Upon hearing his mother's agreement, Oda was also very excited. At that moment, his sister tugged at Oda's clothes and mischievously said, Brother, I don't want you to go. You can play with Watanabe at home, okay? With a milky voice, 
it was really hard to let go. Oda picked up his younger sister, tapped her forehead with his hand, and said, Sister, you're too young. Brother can't take you out to play. Wait, next time brother comes back, he will definitely take you outside to watch. In no time, the woman prepared the food and the Lee family had a rare reunion. In the guest of honor position, two extra sets of bowls and chopsticks were placed, which could be considered a gathering of the Lee family. After finishing the meal, the sky darkened, and Oda wanted to take uncle and talk about the joys and dislikes outside. Being called back by Su Fang, it seemed that he still couldn't bear to part ways with his son. He touched his head and swallowed his words as soon as they reached his mouth. She wanted to tell her son about her background, but she still didn't say it. She didn't want her son to bear a burden of thought. Oda seemed to see her feelings and said rationally, Mother, when I have the ability, I will definitely take you out to see the outside world. Ren Sufang nodded, feeling a mix of emotions in his heart. He had given up the immortal path and was willing to become immortal, but had also experienced some mental struggles. His own qualifications were mediocre, and he had not performed excellently in the sect for many years, to the point where the Qi refining mirror had never stepped in. Among the disciples of the outer sect, he was considered the last to exist, and could be said to have no chance. When he was abandoned by the sect, he woke up and understood that the immortal path was not suitable for her. It was better to give up early. Now, her son is also going to search for the immortal path. Although she is reluctant to let her son miss this rare opportunity, she has softened her heart and made up her mind, only hoping that her son can do something. Separation is always sad. Some people stay up all night, and Ren Sufang is one of them. She packed up Oda's luggage and looked at Oda, who was still sleeping. She whispered to the window, Oda has grown up, it's time to go see the outside world. You won't blame me, will you? The voice is very low, as if speaking to oneself. There was nothing to say all night, and the next day before the sun came out, Li Jinjia and Oda headed away from the village amidst the reluctant gazes of everyone. Chapter 6 Fairy World You are listening at NovelFull.audio The Ko Loi Zara Trong Quatrin Lei Text Chapter 7 Difficulty in Practice You are listening at NovelFull.audio Li Xiaotian remained silent and just nodded at the uncle. The uncle looked into his eyes and continued, cultivating a way can be divided into qi refining, foundation building, alchemy formation, elemental baby formation, and divine transformation. It is said that the strongest in our world is the divine transformation period, and all ten major gates have a divine transformation period to guard. For every level of advancement, opportunities are needed, and few can succeed. Most cultivators spend their entire lives in the qi refining period, where their lifespan is only a few hundred years. If they cannot enter the realm of building foundations, they can only live this life like ordinary people. A small number of people with extremely high talents can increase their lifespan exponentially when they enter the period of building foundations. Without any accidents, they can live for 300 years. In this limited time of 300 years, they must strive to break through the realm of alchemy in order to reach a higher level. There are even fewer cultivators in the period of alchemy. At this level, the lifespan can reach a thousand years, and it is not a problem to open mountains and open up territories. At this level, there are also many who establish schools and schools. As for the experts in the Yuaning period, they are rarely seen. They generally do not easily leave the mountain, understand the mysteries of heaven in their own caves, do not care about worldly affairs, and have a lifespan of up to 10,000 years. Their goal is to strive to achieve spiritual cultivation. The existence of the period of transforming gods is only said to exist in legends. Nowadays, the strongest ten major sects, and the existence of the period of transforming gods, are also few and far between. They are the true pillars of the sect. It can be said that if one day, the ten major sects did not have the existence of the cultivators of transforming gods, the sect would have come to an end. Fortunately, 
as a cultivator of the transformation of gods, if nothing unexpected happens, Shoyuan will not fall for even 100,000 years. Legend has it that there are other levels above the transformation of gods, and only those top great gods can know. The biggest opportunity for cultivating immortals is to cultivate resources. If one does not rely on the sect and cultivates independently, it is very difficult. Cultivating requires huge financial resources, advanced techniques, skillful tools, and even more tenacious perseverance. These all need to be provided by the sect. Uncle, I don't have enough vision and only know these things. Oda nodded but remained silent. For him, today's knowledge has completely exceeded his imagination. It turns out that there are so many things in this world that he knows nothing about. Uncle saw that he didn't make a sound and thought he was scared. He said to him, Nephew, you are still young and there are plenty of opportunities. As long as you are willing to work hard, I believe you can reach the height of cultivating immortality. Oda responded to Uncle this time, and I will definitely cherish this rare opportunity. Uncle pointed ahead and said to Li Xiaotian, Nephew, look, Yongcheng has arrived. Li Xiaotian followed the direction pointed by the uncle and saw a tall city in sight. The city was estimated to have a radius of hundreds of miles and was very spectacular. After walking for half an hour, as he got closer, he couldn't see the whole picture clearly. However, he could clearly see the buildings inside. The tall palace was built on the highest peak of the city, with various buildings from the top to the mountainside, and even to the foot of the mountain. Li Xiaotian looked at everything in front of him, which was a scene he had never dreamed of before. For him at present, it was a great shock. After walking for half an hour, they arrived at the gate of the city. The tall gate was ten zhang hai, and people standing at the bottom of the city were like ants. In their thoughts, the sound of the uncle came to their ears. The nephew said that when entering the city, they needed to pay a spiritual stone. Each person had a lower level spiritual stone. When you first arrived, you didn't know what the spiritual stone was. The uncle told you that spiritual stones are divided into lower level spiritual stones, middle level spiritual stones, top level spiritual stones, and top level spiritual stones. They are the common currency in the cultivation world. 100 lower level spiritual stones can be exchanged for one middle level spiritual stone, and 100 middle level spiritual stones can be exchanged for one. Exchange one top dot grade spirit stone, 100 top dot grade spirit stones can be exchanged for one top dot grade spirit stone. Top grade spirit stones and top grade spirit stones are very rare and not easy to trade. Many cultivators collect them to break through the bottleneck of cultivation. Chapter 8 Yongcheng you are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Speaking, it was Uncle's turn to enter the city. He took out two inferior spirit stones and handed them to the gatekeeper. He said, We too, the gatekeeper looked at Li Xiaotian and didn't say anything. He said to Uncle, Go in, don't ride horses in the city. Uncle responded and beckoned me to walk towards the city gate. From Uncle's expression of holding the spirit stone, it could be seen that he was in great pain. It must be difficult to earn this spirit stone. I accidentally heard uncle mention that Miao Sek's inner disciples can only receive ten inferior spirit stones per month. Uncle comes out to carry out tasks, so there must be some subsidies. Following uncle on the road, entering the city is a different scenery. The road is not wide, with two carriages running side by side. There are numerous shops on both sides of the road, and there are hardly any empty shops on either side. Occasionally, the shouting of the shop assistant can be heard. After walking for about half an hour, the uncle stopped in front of a shop and bowed to the shopkeeper inside, saying, Senior Brother Ma, Junior Brother has returned. The middle-aged man surnamed Ma inside also bowed and said, Junior Brotherly, have you completed the sect mission so quickly? At this moment, Uncle Lee called for Li Xiaotian to come over and said to Senior Brother Ma, This is my nephew from my own family, named Li Xiaotian. He has extremely high talent, and I brought him to the sect to practice this time. 
Senior brother Ma, following the direction of uncle's finger, looked over with a sharp gaze, as if he could see through his body. For a moment, senior brother Ma nodded with a smile. It's good, he's a good seedling. I believe he can definitely pass the trial and enter the sect this time. Congratulations to junior brother Ma first. Uncle waved to Li Xiaotian. His nephew, please come over and see senior brother Ma soon. Li Xiaotian leaned over, arched his hand, and whispered, My name is Li Xiaotian. I have seen senior brother Ma. Senior brother Ma politely bowed back and led the two towards the inner hall. This senior brother surnamed Ma, named Ma Jifu, is very proficient in business. The sect sent him to Yongcheng to manage a store, and he lived up to expectations. He earns a lot of money for the sect every year and is highly valued in the sect. There are more than ten guest rooms in the back hall of this shop, and when the sect comes out for tasks, they will choose to settle here. Therefore, this place is also a gathering place for news on various matters of the sect. In the blink of an eye, we arrived at the back hall. Brother Ma pushed open a door and said to Uncle, Brotherly, you're staying here today. There are two wing rooms inside, so feel free to greet us if you need anything. Please rest for a while, and during your meal, I'll call you two to help you clean up. Uncle politely replied, Thank you, senior brother. Speaking, he said to Li Xiaotian. Nephew, you stay here and take a rest. After walking for a whole day, you're tired enough. Oda, carrying a bundle, walked into the room pointed out by the uncle. The room was cleaned very clean, and it was likely that senior brothers often stayed here. The furniture was also well arranged. Although it was a guest room, it felt like one had arrived at their own home. Perhaps this was the result of Mr. Ma's proper management. It was also really tiring. Li Xiaotian walked into the room and soon fell asleep. When the uncle woke him up, it was already evening, and it seemed that his stomach was hungry, making a gurgling sound. There was also a young woman standing next to the uncle who came to call him and the two of them for dinner. The two of them followed the woman to the living room and saw a senior brother surnamed Ma and two young boys, whom the uncle didn't know either, senior brother Ma introduced, these two are also here to participate in the sect trial. They are descendants of our Ma family, do you know each other? Maybe you'll soon become your senior brothers. Two young people introduced themselves and learned that their names were Ma Ming and Ma Liang, two brothers. Li Xiaotian also introduced himself to each other. Ma Ming happened to be 15 years old this year, and Ma Liang was about 13 years old. The two of them got to know each other and started eating happily. Chapter 9 Miao Sect You are listening at NovelFull.audio This meal lasted until late at night, and both Li Xiaotian and Ma Ming went back to their houses to sleep. Li Xinjia and Ma Senior Brother were still discussing what to do tomorrow. Ma Senior Brother spoke up and said, Li Senior Brother, tomorrow you will take the three of them back to the sect. I have a task to attend to and I'm afraid I won't be able to leave. My family brother entrusted you to take care of one or two on the way. Li Xinjia nodded after listening to senior brother Ma's words and said, Senior brother Ma, please rest assured that I will definitely bring the three of them safely to the sect. The two of them talked about some matters within the sect, and then went back to their respective houses. Li Xiaotian, who was inside, heard the sound of the uncle's return and walked over, saying to the uncle, Uncle, how long will it take from Yongcheng to Miaozong? Li Xinjia thought for a moment and replied, Did you see a tall mountain before entering the city? Miao sect is one of the top sects in Yongcheng, and our sect is located on the second highest peak. The first highest peak is the gate of Yongqing sect. You can walk a few more hours tomorrow to reach the sect. Li Xiaotian stayed up all night, thinking that he was about to meet a fairy. His heart was filled with anticipation, thinking that if he could pass the trial successfully, he would also have the opportunity to become a fairy. He was even more excited. So when Li Xinjia came to wake him up, he was not sure if he had slept last night. He sat up, feeling his eyes clear and hot, 
and then remembered that he had insomnia last night. Li Jinjia looked at his bright red eyes and knew what was going on. He had also experienced it before, and of course knew Oda's current mood, so he didn't blame this nephew. He said with concern, clean it up, we'll leave in fifteen minutes. Senior brother Ma stood at the entrance of the shop, watching as the four of them left. He muttered to himself, you are really a good seedling. You will definitely make some achievements in the sect in the future. Li Jinjia and his group spent half a day working and arrived at the entrance of Miao Zongshan. Li Jinjia took out an identity token engraved with runes. The disciple guarding the mountain gate took the token, confirmed it, and then asked. Are these three disciples here to participate in the trial practice? Li Jinjia replied, Senior brother, the three of them are disciples brought back to practice this time. Please arrange accommodation for them, senior brother. Senior brother Shoshan looked at several young people and smiled, saying, Not bad, the three people you brought back are all good seedlings. He waved and called for a young disciple, saying, Brother Wang, take the three of them to the exam hall, register them, and arrange a quieter place to live. After receiving the order, junior brother Wang led the three of them towards the door. Li Xiaotian looked at the uncle and asked, Uncle, aren't you with us? Li Jinjia replied, I won't go. My residence is at the inner gate, and there is still some way to go. Don't worry, go. I will come and watch your performance on the day of the trial. Li Jinjia has great confidence in his nephew because all the young people in Li Jiashan have small streams and pools. Junior brother Wang led the three of them through the mountain gate. As they entered the gate, the scenery in front of them changed. When they were outside, they saw an ordinary mountain gate, which was now like a fairy world. Clouds and mist wrapped around the mountainsides one after another. At first glance, they saw countless Jin Wanyu halls on the mountaintop, saying that this was the fairy world, and no one believed it. Not long after walking, I saw a training platform with young disciples in groups of three or two competing in sparring on the platform. Li Xiaotian saw a female disciple flying with a sword, and his eyes were almost falling out. After walking for a quarter of an hour, they arrived at a large hall with several gilded characters, Deacon Hall, written on it. Senior brother Wang took them away and respectfully said to an old man inside, Elderly, these three disciples are here to participate in the trial. Please register them. Elderly looked at the three of them, nodded, registered their names, and assigned them rooms. Then, he asked his junior brother surnamed Wang to take them to their place of residence. Because the three of them were not disciples of the sect yet and lived in the residence of the outer disciples not far from the deacon hall. After allocating rooms for the three, junior brother Wang left. Li Xiaotian sat by the window of the room, looking at the peaks in the mist. He remembered the flying sword he had just seen passing by the training platform, and his hopeful gaze became even more determined. Chapter 10 Trial Selection Start You are listening at NovelFull.audio In the blink of an eye, it was already seven days after Li Xiaotian arrived at the sect. During this period, except for his meal time, he mostly stayed in his room. A few days ago, the elder distributed the trial rules to him, and he read them several times. Now he has memorized them. During this period, his uncle Li Xinjia visited him once and had a hundred times more confidence in him. He didn't even say any words of encouragement for the whole day. It seems that he has great confidence in his nephew entering the sect. At this moment, the sound of Dong came from the mountaintop of the sect, a total of nine rings. A few days ago, the sect rules given by the elder stated that hearing the nine ring bell was the day when the trial began. All disciples in the sect had to participate in observation, while the preparatory disciples who participated in the trial had to gather in the square after hearing the bell, waiting for the sect leader to answer the questions. After the trial was over, the elders in the sect would choose the suitable disciples based on their own judgment. Those who could be selected by the elders of each peak could naturally become disciples of the sect. Some talented individuals may also be selected by the sect leader and become their own disciples. 
the cultivation resources obtained are the best. Li Xiaotian put aside his thoughts and followed the crowd towards the square. In recent days, he has gained some understanding of the sect and learned that the sect is divided into seven peaks. The main peak, Zixiao Peak, is where the sect leader handles sect affairs and imparts teachings. The other six peaks are Yenyang Peak, Qingyun Peak, Hanyu Peak, Tsueizhu Peak, Bitten Peak, and Feipu Peak. It is said that each peak cultivates different techniques, so the leaders of each peak will also choose disciples who are suitable for practicing their own techniques. In a moment, he arrived at the square, which was very different from when he passed by a few days ago. At this moment, the square was surrounded by disciples who came to observe. At a glance, they were dressed in uniform and had about 20,000 to 30,000 disciples, most of whom were young, looking several years older than Li Xiaotian. On the high platform of the square, there is still an empty space, which should be reserved for the sect leader and the leaders of each peak. At this moment, the disciples on the stands turned their heads to look in one direction. A few people walked out of the crowd, led by sect leader Lan Yi, who was followed by four men and two women. It is undoubtedly the leaders of each peak. When they sat down, the elder in charge of the trial spoke in a strong and powerful voice like a bell. Everyone, be quiet. The sound was like a magical force, and suddenly the surroundings were so quiet that needles could be heard. Then he looked at the sect leader and said cleanly, Please teach me. The sect leader stood up from his seat, flew up to the stage, and stood in the middle of the trial field, only a dozen or so feet away from Li Xiaotian. It was only then that he could see the full picture of the sect leader Lan Yi. Looking at someone who is only in his forties, he is of average height, with a thin face, a slightly longer face clip, and hair tied behind him. He is wearing a light blue robe, giving a feeling of ethereal aura. In one word, he describes handsome, and in two words, he describes handsome. Many female disciples of the sect in front of the stage are now blushing with peach blossoms on their faces. Of course, our protagonist Li Xiaotian is only 13 years old at this time and doesn't understand these things. He only thinks that Lord Lan Yi is very imposing, and perhaps he still yearns to grow up like the Lord. Lord Lan Yi looked around and then said, I see today, the elders and disciples in the sect have almost arrived. Our sect has developed for 500 years, and our Miao sect has grown from a few dozen people to nearly 30,000 disciples, all thanks to the efforts of everyone. Today is the annual new disciple recruitment conference of our sect. I believe that there are also thousands of disciples who have come to participate in the entrance examination today. However, the recruitment of disciples in our sect is very strict, and most of you may be eliminated and miss the chance to enter our sect. Therefore, I kindly ask everyone to exert their best abilities to gain recognition from the elders of our sect. Today is not my home game, so I won't say too much. Below, the presiding elder will announce the trial rules. After Lord Lani e finished speaking, he flew down without making too many stops. The presiding elder took over the words of Lord Lani e and continued to announce the rules of the trial.